Welcome to Celebration Conversations. I'm your host, Sarah Taylor Young. Join me each week as I talk to singer-songwriters, artists, and friends about how they have turned their pain into purpose. Here at Celebration Conversations, it is my hope that you find motivation and celebration in your own journey. Let's get to it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Celebration Conversations. I am here today with Janelle Arthur. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. So I got to ask, okay, the single out right now with the amazing Dolly Parton is what does that even feel like? I mean, to me, it feels like, what can I, like, where do I go from here? You know, how can I top something like that? You know, like that's kind of the feeling that I get right now. I have a very, um, I have a lot of peace just about like kind of what I've accomplished in my career already at this point, just because I've, I've been able to, to do something so full circle. And so, um, I mean, to me, being from East Tennessee and um, everything, knowing who, growing up, knowing exactly who Dolly was and then portraying her in a show about her life story, um, that type of thing, you know, it just, this feels like, you know, I I don't even know how to explain it, but it's just like the top for me. Like, I I don't really know how I could um, do much more or do something more special or full circle in my lifetime. So, yes, I remember when I was a little girl (laughs) and I saw her do the song, um, hello, God, do you know that song off of her halos and horns? Yes. I saw that at the CMA awards. She was decked out. It was just this very angelic outfit and very Dolly, you know, way. And she had a choir behind her and I cried. I bawled. That was like, I I, I thought. I, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do someday. Is is that kind of what you yes. felt too when you would see her perform? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was really inspired by, you know, a lot of the artists in the nineties and I was a big Vince Gill fan as well. So I just, I realized from such an early age that that was just what I wanted to do. And it was, it was from seeing those types of things, seeing people, seeing them on stage and hearing the crowd and, and feeling like, oh, they can do that. Like for a living, they can do that every day if they want to. And that's what I want to do every day. So yeah, I discovered that from a very early age. Yeah. That's awesome. And you got to sing with Vince Gill on the Opry, right? I did. I got to sing with Vince on the Opry and we, yeah, he and I closed the show. He randomly asked me last minute to close the show with him. And we did when I call your name. And that was one of the songs I sang when I was really little, um, when I was a baby practically. And, um, and then he and I, we ended up, uh, singing again together in Chattanooga, um, in a show there. And then we also ended up, we also uh, recorded a song together called Love You Anyway. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. so what was it like to work with Dolly um, on your single Hand Me Downs? That's an amazing song, by the way. It just reminded me so much of Code of Many Colors, like today's version Thank of it. Yeah, amazing Thank you for song. saying that. So many people have have compared it to Code of Many Colors or at least the feeling that you get when you listen to that song. And, you know, I I just can't compare song to song, but I absolutely get that type of feeling, um, a similar feeling that, that, you know, when you listen to something like Code of Many Colors, um, you know, that's kind of the, that was what made me feel like I had to reach out to Dolly was because I was getting those feelings as I was listening back to Hand Me Downs. And that was what hit me like, this is a modern day Dolly Parton song. I have to get this to Dolly. Um, So yeah, just that, I mean, but working with her, um, well, you know, it's unbelievable that she trusted me so much on this because she's Dolly. She knows what to do. And the first thing that she said when, whenever my uh, friend Steve Summers played her the song was tell Janelle to tell just to let me know what she wants me to do wow oh, what a I was like I know just so humble and I'm thinking as if I care what you do Dolly I don't care what you do. 
<laughs> I'm just glad your name is on the thing. I, know. <laughs> I, was, I, was just, I was okay that my song went through her ears. That was good enough for me. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, but instead, you know, she wanted to be a part of it and just working with someone like her um, was like I said earlier, just very full circle for me um, because I got my first start portraying her as a child in a show about her life story called Paradise Road at Dollywood. Yes. And um, so the fact that I met her all those years ago and then now I had a song with her was just like um, hard to fathom, just hard to process, but she was just so real and um and just gave me that support it's so funny how they say you know don't meet your heroes or you might be just because you might be disappointed but I've met two of my biggest heroes which would be Dolly and Vince and they have treated me better than most people in the in the entire town of Nashville have and that and that shows you who they are and it shows you it, it it shows you that's why they have had such long careers and been so respected by people but Dolly was just so um you know kind to me and supportive she said in one of her letters that she wrote to me she was like us East Tennessee girls got to stick together I love it I love it yeah and she just uh she wanted to get together she wanted us to be able to get in the studio together and it just never worked out um and then of course we were going to release the song last year uh everything was finalized in in 2019 We had everything ready to go. We had a complete plan, a rollout plan and everything. And then the pandemic hit. So we knew it was, yeah, we knew it was not the right time to release such a special song. And yeah. Yeah. So we waited and now we're like, we can't wait anymore. (laughs) Yeah. I wouldn't want to either. I would want to shout that from the rooftops. Yeah. Um, Who were the writers on this and how did you, uh, like, were you friends with Dolly kind of beforehand and that's how you kind of connected with her? So I wrote this song with Emily Lynch. Okay. Um, she and I, this was our very first time to ever write a song together. And wow. she came in with this idea of hand-me-downs. And, you know, when you're co-writing with people, you have to be very strategic about what type of ideas you take into each room, yes. you know, because you want to write the right idea with the right person. And right, so right. I was just so glad that she brought this idea into our right, because it was just so, uh, it, you know, of course, obviously it really resonated with me and it was a very fast, right. We, we finished it. I feel like very, very quickly. Um, but Dolly and I, we, we weren't really necessarily in touch at that point. We had reconnected when I was on American Idol. We first met when I was portraying her as a child in a show about her life called Paradise Road right. and then kind of lost touch and then we reconnected when I was on American Idol because she wrote um, a little letter in to me a little note oh. um and then yeah she was showing her support and um and then when I got back to Nashville and I wrote this song with Emily um I I knew I wanted to get the song to Dolly after you know I didn't we weren't thinking about Dolly at the time but I knew a few months later I was like I have to get this to Dolly so the way that I got it to her was through my friend I met all those years ago in that show Paradise Road wow yeah and he just randomly played the song for her I didn't even know if you know he would do that and he did and she could have said well, Steve, you just tell her that it, that was just so sweet. That's such a cute little song. And I'm just so proud of her. But I right, feel, right. You know, yeah. Like she, she, Dolly can turn anyone down in the nicest way and you'll uh-huh. never be mad at her. And it'll be um, still very sweet. And, you know, yes. so Dolly, yeah. Yes, like you could never be mad at her. And um, so I just expected that, you know, she would say, thank you for thinking of me, but blah, blah, blah. You know, and instead she said, let me know what you want me to do to explain wow. what you want me to do. So she wanted to know, she wanted me to explain where she wanted me to sing, where, I, where I wanted her to sing on the song. Wow. She wanted me to explain, you know, just everything to her. And I was just blown away by that. Cause she, she's Dolly and she could go into a situation thinking, well, I know what to do. Cause I'm Dolly, but she, right. you know, yeah. She, she could have let her ego take, things away you know and and she she took a back seat to you I just think that's 
that's honorable. <laughs> that's so, so humble. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so where did the inspiration from hand-me-downs come from? What were you doing when you, or, or, uh, when, when Emily and you guys got together, where did that, all that inspiration come to from? Well, I just, I'm a very big family person. So the minute that she's saying, um, a half of the first half of the chorus, that was pretty much what she came in with. And, um, I immediately just started thinking about how I was told that like, I like that I talk with my hands and <laughs> I'll never forget a lady, um, talk, a lady at church told me one time, you, she said, you talk with your hands, just like your mama. You're just like your mama and you talk with your hands. And I didn't know, I'd never even heard of that before. And I didn't, uh, realize I did that. So, um, whenever you're thinking about the things, you know, the whole, the whole meaning behind the song is about passing down traits or characteristics, you know, whether that's physical traits, character traits, um, or physical like heirlooms, things that you carry down, you know, through generations that are passed down. Um, so we wanted to just list off all of those different types of things. And so that's where like, you know, dark brown eyes and stuff like that. Cause I, my, everyone on my dad's side, we all have these really dark brown eyes. Me too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, um, and just like the little Krispy Kreme thing, my dad, he's just, he loves Krispy Kreme. And so I, that's where that came from. And, um, and I'll just, and then the verse that that's Dolly's verse, you know, my, my grandpa's Bible, um, has been around, you know, we've had it since he passed. And I just always remember like seeing the things that he had underlined and just like thinking, am I supposed to say that, you know, is that something that I'm supposed to see? And, um, is this a sign or something like that, you know? And, um, I just, that, so a lot of this is just from, you know, true like life experiences. She and I just really um, both are family people and it just worked. It just really worked. And um, I'm just so glad that we got together that day. Yes. Yes. Who, who would have known what have happened if you didn't? Like. Oh, <laughs> I know it's unreal because it's like that song, that song was really, I believe like just what did it for Dolly too. You know, she just, she heard that and she responded to it. She, she felt that she's that type of person that's never forgotten where she came from. Yeah. And, yeah. and she's proud. She has pride in all of that. And, um, so yeah, that, yeah, that's awesome. The biggest thing I love about her is her humility and her willingness to get, you know, support from her fans. She doesn't have to earn it. She's already earned it. And she's willing to place herself below other people too. You know, she doesn't let the fame and everything get to her. So it's true. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, let's, uh, change paths really quickly. I also loved white horse. That song <laughs> spoke to me so much. It's such a strong female empowerment song. And I just thought, yeah, I loved that one. It's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so White Horse was um, written by me and two other friends of mine, Jen Stegall and Brian Mayer. And I can't take credit for this um, idea. This, this hook was Jen's hook. Jen actually produced the song as well. And um, she came in, you know, she really wanted to write a song that said, you know, I can find my own white horse. Like I can, I can save my own day. You know, I don't need anybody else. And um, it was just that type of, um, I love songs that are very encouraging and very empowering, but this was a whole, you know, different level of, of empowering because I feel like as girls, we grow up and we're, you know, we see the fairy tales and we see the Disney movies and we really define like happiness and success by just like having this happy, like happily ever after, you know, and mm -hmm. this happy ending. It's like, well, you can still find happiness throughout your life. If you decide to, you can, you can, you know, just take charge of your own life and decide you know, if you're going to be happy, that you want to be happy. And um, that's really just kind of what the song's about. So I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful that we wrote it and the music videos on YouTube, if anybody wants to look it up too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I loved it. It reminded me of my mom too. Um, I come from 
uh, I'm a domestic violence survivor and, you know, it, it yeah. made me, re- it was very reminiscent about, um, you know, taking your life back in your own hands and having yeah. that warrior mentality. You know, I was, I was a survivor as a child and as a, as an adult. And, you know, I just so much, uh, honor and respect my mom for the courage she had and in other women, the courage they have to have to get out of those situations. And yeah. And I found myself in the same situation as an adult. I learned quickly from it. Um, you know, thank by the grace of God, but that's really what it spoke to me. And when I look at my little girl, I have a four-year-old little girl. She is a no-nonsense little girl. (laughs) I mean, just to give you a for instance, okay. Uh, The other day I was uh, cooking dinner, you know, we're doing our nightly routine and my husband's opening the mail and everything. She just walks in the room. She says, guys, I'm cute. Like, just like, (laughs) just matter of fact, just guys, I just need you to know this. Yeah. And then she proceeded to look at her reflection in the oven. Okay. (laughs) That is amazing. You're raising a strong, a strong little girl. Well, I, it's not by my doing. That's, it just seems like that's how she, I mean, maybe she sees me being that strong and everything, but I just think it's important for young girls to feel like they can be okay with like just themselves. Enough. Yes. They're, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like you were, you don't have to find like we're always looking for external forces to complete us and to you know like you know really satisfy us. And it's like, well, we have everything with within us. And you know, of course, as believers, you believe right. that you have everything inside of you. You have you have the Holy Spirit, so you are complete in that. And so we are just constantly grasping at all these things around us. In, in the world and trying to, you know, complete, uh, make, you know, feel complete and everything. And I think that's that this song has spoken to a lot of people. And also, um, you might want to listen to my song, Light Myself on Fire as well. I feel like anyone who has dealt with an abusive situation um, can definitely relate to that song as well. That one, I think, has really helped a lot of people. It's yeah. very powerful. It's just a, it's more of a ballad. So, Okay. Yeah. I love me some ballads. I'm not going to lie. And and I love some inspirational songs. I'll definitely check that out and probably tag it on the, on the stream here too. So, um, yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about, uh, something where you feel like you found freedom in your life, uh, whether it be a spiritual, emotional, we talk about a lot on the show. This is celebration conversations. We talk about things that we've celebrated and just overcome in our lives. Yeah. Well, I can't remember exactly when it necessarily clicked, but you know, I found freedom in just kind of eventually like letting go of what people were saying about me or what people thought about me. And I got to give, got to give my husband credit for that. He's really been, um, the person that has made, it's just, he's influenced me in that way. He just does not care what anyone thinks or what anyone says about him. And I've always kind of been the opposite. And so he's really influenced me in that way. And that is so freeing when you can just have, you don't really care as much about what people think. You just know who you are and um, you let that just roll off your back, you know, and, and you know who you know that God knows who you are and your closest friends and family know who you are. And that's what's most important. Um, and so that was probably the most uh, I've felt found. A, I've been so thankful to, to find that, um, you know, it's just very it takes a big weight off of your shoulders when you're not con- when you're not constantly uh, just thinking about that stuff and you're just right. living life, just doing your thing. And it's very freeing. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm very reminded of that with my little girl. She marches to the beat of her own drum. Um, oh she's just, you know, she, she's such, uh, her brain works a little bit differently. You know, she, she has a little bit of a speech delay. She doesn't let that get her down. You know, she, oh, she plays with, 
yeah, she plays with uh, more of the boys than she does the girls. <laughs> she's just, she's it. just a kind of an eclectic child. And I, and, but she awesome. doesn't, she doesn't let those differences get in her way. She doesn't even feel like there are differences. She just lives I life. Yeah. I'm just so inspired by that. Um, do you feel like these steps to that kind of freedom, what was something that took some time? Did you like really try to work at getting better with that? What kind of steps did you take? I feel like it was just, I don't know exactly when it happened. I know that I think it had to have been, um, after you go through so much of that, where you are hurt by people's words and you are scarred by that, um, I think at first you're kind of a little numb to it. Um, yeah. but then, but then I just think that you work through it and you eventually, I think it's, it's just finding a, a confidence and maybe it was just a maturity thing too. It's just, I, I've, I finally got to the point where I, I just didn't really think about that. And I didn't, um, I just found confidence in who I am and, and that, and I, I think when you realize that people, if they have, if they are ugly towards you, if they do ugly things, you know, and, and they're hurtful and, um, they may betray you or just, you know, they're, just, or they're just a, you know, mean person. Um, that has everything to do with them and not you. Right. I think, I think my growth came from re that realization of it. I thought there was something I was doing wrong. I thought that if I was just nice enough, I thought if I was just good enough, if I was right. just, if I laughed and I cried enough with them and I did all these things that, you know, they would come around and they would like me more. And it's just like, no, like you don't understand. It's nothing to do with you. So it's everything to do with them and, and how they feel. That's why they treat people in a bad way. Yeah. So my, my quote really is, you know, if there is nothing you did to make someone dislike you, there is nothing you can do to make them like you. Mm, that's good. It's, it's all about them. It's really, it's not the effort that you can make. And sometimes it makes them even, it makes them hate you even more. Yeah. <laughs> the nicer you are to them. Cause like, like, like the Bible says, you know, heaps co uh, coals of fire or whatever whatever it says on top of their heads. And it's like, you know, it just, you kill people with kindness and it just burns them up, you know? And yeah. So sometimes you're just better off to just walk away and let, let that just move on with your life and let people go and, and just not take it. So not take it to heart when people are ugly to you. And yeah. Yeah. I, I think something uh, that I learned in my own recovery journey when I was kind of healing, you know, from the domestic violence and abuse was um, my sponsor at, at, at the time when I was going through all this healing, she said, Remember the verse, Sarah, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And at that time, I like, I was angry at those people that had said ugly things or did ugly things to me. Yeah, and I was angry. Yeah. And I wanted revenge. I was at that point where I wanted revenge. And I remember she told me, she said, God's going to take care of them. They That's have right. to, they have to answer just like everybody else. So you give that control over to him. And that's really when I learned about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not when you say what the other person did was okay. It's when you right. release that control over to him and let him deal with it. Yes. Because right. if you have that control, it's just going to eat you up, you know, <laughs> and it, it's not going to bother the other person at all. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. And vengeance is his, it's not ours. So, you know, we, we just have to trust that. And, and uh, how do we know what's best for somebody? You know, you can look at people's lives and you can think, well, they have, you know, so many great things and, you know, they're not getting, you know, what they deserve or something like that, but you don't know really what's best for anyone. Like God, yeah. only God knows. And so, um, I think that we just have to trust that and just do, just be the best versions of ourselves. And that's all we can do. Yeah. Amen. Very well said. Um, what would you say to somebody maybe going through some similar situation there, you know, maybe they're the voices 
of the world are so loud and they feel like they just can't find themselves. What would you tell to like maybe a previous yourself or a middle schooler going through some of those things? I think I would tell my younger self, um, there is nothing that you can do to control the actions of others. The only thing that you can control is your attitude and your love for people. And, but also um, loving, loving people, you can still love people from a distance. And sometimes right. I think we think, well, if I walk away from this situation, or if I am, you know, no longer dealing with this person and let, allowing them to be in my life, then we're turning our back on them and we're not really loving them, but that's not what love is. I mean, right. love, you know, loving someone doesn't mean you have to be stupid at the same time. <laughs> right. That should be on a shirt. <laughs> yeah, you can still love people and be smart about yeah. your boundaries. And yeah. um, I think I think that's what I would tell anybody if you're just constantly breaking your back trying to make people like you, if they just don't for some reason. And you know, that that's just happened randomly throughout my life. It's not something that you know I constantly deal with, but it it was always very hurtful when I dealt with it. And it was I'm a I'm an empath. I'm very, you know, I feel the energy of a lot of people around me and I I'm very I've always been very sensitive. And so um I think that it can really uh, discourage you and all, almost knock you off of your path. Like, yeah, and that's how yeah. the enemy, that's how the enemy really uses those people in those situations, because you're so focused on the hurt and the situation over here that you're, that you're, you know, you've been knocked off track and you're now not focused on your purpose and what you're supposed to do. And it's a constant battle for me to try to always just refocus, refocus. And I'm working on it, but, and I feel like I've done a lot better at it, but it is definitely a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. We're all works in progress mm -hmm. uh, and progress is progress, uh, whatever. Um, but even I have this book that at Barnes and Noble um, called The Faith of Dolly Parton. And I've been reading it lately just to get some inspiration. Yeah. And it's just amazing how she kept going to her heavenly father and kept in the word and, and kept praying and, and kept yes. focus too, you know, so I'm about halfway yes. through, but such a great book. I, love that. I need book. to read that. Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. Thing. I need I probably, to read. Yes. I probably have every book <laughs> about her. I uh, just love her. She's, <laughs> she's awesome, but she's just such an inspiring lady to me. And she's such a great woman of faith too. You know, that's what I admire the most yeah. about her. You know, like she, she could have let the situation with her and Porter Wagner get her really down and be, Oh, you know, but, but she rose above, she just kept going, you know, and I, I just really admire that's that. Right. Yeah. And she's really done so much good to people that maybe didn't even deserve it, you know, and yeah. she's just really been, been kind to, um, I just, uh, that's all I'll say. I, you know, you hear of things about people and you go, wow. And Dolly really did the right thing in those types of situations. And, you know, I mean, it's almost like sometimes I'll be just, I'll just be like, is she an angel on earth? Right. Like she really just like, makes you go, is she like, like not of this world? Because Dolly has this thing. She, she is loved by all types of people yes. and from all walks of life. And not many people can win over every crowd. It's yeah. very, very hard to do. And I know that from being an artist, you know, it's, it's like, you kind of have to find your crowd and stick with it. And you know, that's your crowd. And I feel like Dolly has just won over all these people. And so then I'm just like, wow, she's just, how does she do that? You know, yeah. it's, it's just, that's a whole other, you know, art that she has that she's just, she's a master at. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, part of it is just her personality and her willingness to connect with anybody. Yeah, um, like sure. she could, she could probably win over a Buddhist, you know, <laughs> like she's just got that kind of personality. It's very bubbly. It's very, um, you know, light and good to get to know. And her laugh is contagious. You know, you can't, you just can't help, but, but want to laugh when she, and she, I know. She, 
just she gets people you know it's that humble beginnings that she started with it's like absolutely she, and, and she's not let herself get big-headed or anything no and no she, it seems yeah. like she's very respectful of other people even if they disagree with her that's okay oh, you know? absolutely absolutely she is definitely like that and and this is even this is where I feel like the superhuman nature comes in because yes those are all the things that make her so lovable and so relatable and and helps her connect with people yeah. but I will say this not everyone loves bubbly personalities that's true that's true yeah but everybody loves Dolly <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. She's superhuman. Like she's superhuman. She just has this ability um, to just win over everyone. And that's what makes me go, is she an angel? Is she really just an angel walking on this earth? <laughs> yeah. She's just incarnated or something. That's yeah. Right. So yeah. Funny. yeah. She's incredible. And I'm just so, I'm just so grateful, you know, that I'm actually, I have anything to do with her and, you know, right now in this, with this song and that she believed in this song and me enough to, you know, collaborate and put her name and her stamp of approval on it because, you know, you're a Dolly fan. When you're a Dolly fan, you know that Dolly is a lot, a lot of what makes Dolly, Dolly Parton is the fact that she's such a, a smart businesswoman. She so, is. Yes. Yes. So the fact that she, you know, she's careful about what she does and she's very selective. So the fact that she just wanted to do this with me, that is even what is the most humbling part of that, you know? So just great. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you probably feel like, you know, well, I've gotten my biggest dream. Where do you go from here? What are your next steps with your music goals? Well, I was saying that um, my goals, a lot of my goals have changed. Um, you know, I feel like you have dreams and then you have goals and mm -hmm. like, you know, your dreams kind of, you know, get you, keep you inspired and keep you going, but you have, but your goals need to be a little bit more realistic. I think sometimes, mm -hmm. and you go, okay, this is my goal. And, um, my goal right now is really to just, um, be able to get my music out to as many people as possible and be able to tour or <clears throat> just, you know, get out there and do, do music just for the rest of my life. I mean, that's really my goal. I mean, you know, back in the day, I would have said, you know, oh, I'd like to have number ones and, um, you know, uh, awards, win awards and stuff. And those things would be wonderful. I mean, I would never turn that down, but is that the end all be all to me? It's really not. It's, it's just not anymore. And um, so I just, I feel like, yes, I would, that, that would be amazing. And I would definitely take it, but I just really want to be able to make music and travel and touch people's lives with my music. That's really my goal because you know, I grew up singing in shows, um, in production shows, and but you're kind of you're really stuck in one place, yeah. And you you are uh, singing other people's songs. So my right. goal is to be able to do my songs and hopefully relate to other people and be able to get enough fans in different areas to where I can go and play these shows and meet, meet everyone and, um, and just be, just be there and, and, uh, connect with them and get to hug them and, and, uh, just be there for my fans. Cause I think that that's a really big, uh, what, what's the point? That's a right. really big purpose is to, you know, a lot of people, they do it for the fame and they do it for the, or they do it just for the music or they do it um, just because they, they want that recognition. And, um, for me, it's always been about being an influence and, and try to just wanting to do it for the right reasons and wanting right. to help people. Music has helped me through so many things in my life. And so I just want to make the kind of music and be the type of artist in person that, that makes people feel understood. Right. So those are my goals. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Amazing goals. What, what would you say to somebody who maybe is a few steps 
behind you and, and trying to really pursue that, you know, maybe they, they are scared of auditioning for American Idol or afraid to get in their first co-write. What would you say to those people who are five steps or 20 steps behind you? I would say just stay uncomfortable, stay uncomfortable. <laughs> Do the things that are very uncomfortable because I promise you, I guarantee eventually that uncomfortable thing will become comfortable and you will have to move on to the next uncomfortable thing. Mm. If you And you will actually, if you're like me, you'll kind of get addicted to that. I'm really addicted to just finding the new challenge. Yeah. Um, and so... I just recommend just doing, just, just throw yourself into the things that scare you. Um, and then you'll eventually, you will grow through that and it will seem like nothing. And then you'll move on to the next thing. And um, it's just getting, it's just like getting back in the gym. You know, it's like the hardest thing to do is just go back to just get in the gym that first time. Right. And it's like, but, but you get stronger. You get stronger yeah. if you just keep going back and you just keep doing the uncomfortable thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, one of my pastors north at North Boulevard Boulevard Church of Christ. Um, he would all mm -hmm. he he would give a uh, an illustration on his whiteboard and say, "Okay, here's a circle. Here's God. Here's comfort zone." Yeah, you know, like you you have to get outside of your comfort yeah. zone in order to experience those things with God and for him to really work through you, you know, so right. very well said. I so very true. much agree. Cause then you do rely on God more when you are uncomfortable. Cause then you're like, okay, I can't do this by myself. I'm really going to need God to help me through this and to, um, you know, guide me and give me the courage and the knowledge that I need to, to make this happen. So Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's been an honor to have you on the show. It's been a blessing uh, just to getting to know you and knowing the ins and outs about Dolly. I'm a diehard Dolly fan. So Aww, she's the best. I'm so yeah. glad that we got to meet and I hope we can do this again sometime. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey there. Don't go just yet. We have a special sneak peek of Janelle's music video of Hand Me Downs featuring the amazing Dolly Parton. Be sure to follow Janelle on socials and visit her website at www.janellearthur.com. Here is Hand Me Downs. I get it honestly This love is running through